제가 작년까지만 해도 솔직히 이 롤드컵 이 월드 챔피언십 큰 무대에 제가 설수 있을 거라는 상상조차 하지 못했었는데 올해 이렇게 와서 딱 선수로 수많은 관중들의 환호, 연호 막 이런 거다 받고 게임을 하다 보니까 정말 아 이건 진짜 내가 이 일을 시작하길 잘했구나 하면서 정말 감격스러운 순간들이었고 그리고 또 이제 사강은 더, 더 많으신 관중분들이 오시는데 상상만 해도 진짜 너무 짜릿하네요. Welcome back to the 2014 World Championship. The teams are loading in for game two. So far, it's Samsung White who have taken the lead, gentlemen, with a commanding 28 minute win in game one. How does that leave you time to think about game two? I mean, we saw they were trying to use the most of their time in between games, doing their analysis oh, and yeah. right on the stage just so they could get back in the next one because there's a ton of things they have to change. Yeah, and the worst part now for Samsung Blue is you're looking at these picks like the Akala and you're like, should we ban it? Are we afraid of it? It just completely destroyed us. I feel like you have to be like, okay, it was one game. Yep. We can give Akali again if they wanted or was it maybe just a one-trick uh, one pony they had for it in this case? I don't know. I don't feel like they have to ban it, but you definitely have to think about it, and that's the annoying part with going into next pick and ban phase. Yeah, and the biggest thing I feel like is the versatility of blue is already a little bit suspect, right? Throughout almost all of group stage and quarterfinals, they were the ones banning Alistair and Zillion. Yeah. They try and switch up one of those bans, and they were really heavily punished with that first pick, Zillion, the way white came out. Now that they're on the red side, they have even less flexibility, so things are really gonna be tough for blue here in game two. And having to ban that Zillion now against white, they take the rumble away from Acorn, and they're trying to take away some of those comfort picks, but have we seen everything from white yet? That's a big question. Oh, oh for sure not. I mean, Zillion, Alistar expected bans from blue. Now they're on the purple yeah. side. Yeah. And also Samsung White, they can just look for these target bands. Thresh against Heart, it's his best support by far. You have, again, the Rumble against Akon, who is known as his legendary Rumble player when he bursted onto the pro scene. He only played Rumble, and it was he was actually a one-trick pony in that case with yeah. the Rumble yeah. pick here. So you ban it away from him as well. And again, Tristana ban. They did it last time. I thought they did it to get him on Twitch, but it seems not. The rise left up, but the Maokai taken away. I think that stings a little bit for Acorn there. What does he decide to choose? Well, we did look at their Acorn, which champion he played right. or plays. Yeah. No rise in summer. Right. No rise so far during Worlds. Dada is normally the rise play in the mid lane, and we haven't seen them play it yet yet Worlds. So I feel like that's why Samson White can take the Maokai and say, "Do you want to play the rise or not?" Yeah, I mean, making sure that Acorn doesn't have Maokai is also. Incredibly key. Maokai has been such a boon for Samsung Blue. Right. Post 20 minutes when they can find those team fights. I mean, at the moment, White is just this incredibly versatile force that can do almost anything. I feel like they're they're almost trapped in a picking rise, even if it's for Dade. They just don't necessarily have to pick it yet because yeah. White has already picked their top laner. And I like the Janna pick up here if they do lock it in because she's really been one of the most contested supports, especially when Stretch really back. good picks there. Yes, you have such a good dual lane now. As long as you coordinate the shield with, with their traits from Lucian, you have one of the most dominant 2v2 lanes. You can also fast push towers, which you might see Blue try to do. So they're looking more mid-game focused right now. And look on the side of Samson White. Suddenly they're looking towards the late game. Let's see, that Kog'Maw was hovered right now for Pawn, but they're going to switch it around here. That Lucian being taken away, grabbed up for Deft here. Not as Corky though, Doublelift very outspoken about that Corky play for Deft, but he feels like lane yeah. bullying is what Corky can do, and what Lucian can do very well is going to be his lock-in. Well, I feel, like, pick. I feel like with the Lucian pick, they're more heavily trying to starve him and push right. him, I mean, maybe push him onto Vayne at this point or even just make him play Corky because they don't think it's his style. So much of Imp's great AD carry play has been about his movement, not necessarily his skill shots, where Deft would definitely be the skill shot right. AD carry. They pick it because Corky plus Lucian are really the two best AD carries left right now. I just want to see yeah. how Imp performs on it. That's going to be the key. And also, we often see Corky being logged in when you want, again, a physical damage mid laner, so you have some magic damage from the Corky and you just got all physical damage all around because Maokai is not enough magic damage 
magic damage himself. Mm -hmm. That opens up for a Yasuo or a Jace pick now mm -hmm. for Pawn in the mid lane, which we might see because that is two of his most played champions, two of the best champions, and they fit the combo already when you have the Maokai to set up a Yasuo or you have the Jace with the poke from a Kogi already. Also, I really. Yeah. I really wonder how much Spirit was broken that last game on Lee Sin. Because That's if true. it's available, I would expect him to pick it almost immediately. However, with those two lock-ins and the two things they're hovering right now, it would be an incredibly mid-game focused team comp from Samsung Blue. It's something that rose to heavy prominence a little bit earlier. The rise still makes a yeah. fair bit of sense, and it is still a pretty mid-game heavy composition. Blue just wants to make sure they don't get steamrolled yes, this time. Exactly. They do have some good late game. We know Ryze is an absolute monster in the late game, and Karsix is the best late game jungler in terms of team fighting. So they do have fairly good mid game, and they have the late game already covered as well, just with these two picks. And now, for oh. if it's going to be a Ryze mid lane, that's actually smart by Blue to pick the Ryze early here before we saw the lock in from Samson White in the mid lane, because Yasuo is extremely weak against the Ryze. Right. So they lock it in here and therefore force. A Jace pick, which I don't think Samson White is too worried about. Oh no, they definitely we want to play Jace again. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> again, you have the Jace corking out for this mid game, insane siege and poke. You have the Morgana for the disengage with the Black Shield. And if someone ever goes too low, Rengar pops his ulti, jumps in, and you die together with the Maokai. Does Annie make a return here? Coming back to Worlds. Already have the support on this? the board, so it's kind of just a hover. And it wouldn't really be a corn for the top lane, but. Cassidy might as well be if he could pick that in. We've seen it a few times before. Also heard some inklings of a Galio within the practice. Are you what? Very much so. I can't remember who said it, so I probably shouldn't be saying it, but I heard there were a lot of kills that came from that Galio when they were yeah. messing around. Could it be the counter that everybody's looking for? This is well, going to be crazy. <laughs> Here's the thing, though. There's a lot of physical damage on the, on the side of Samson White. So it's not like you can just stack uh, them on, man. on the Galio and become unkillable. I mean, the Jace yeah. is going to destroy the you. The itself, it yeah, here. doesn't really fit. So this is like blue twice now, getting a few things that they want, but more taking away the Lucian. They're almost putting themselves on the back foot here as they come into these games, trying to play like white to stop them, and it's almost not yeah. working. I mean, I'm really excited to see Galio. Oh, yeah, yeah, sure. But I'm really, really, really confused right now. I mean, so again, they do have this insane, like, AoE teamfight combo. You have the Rise, you have Karthix, get the reset, and Lucian with all his AoE damage as well. So you, sure. you, have, you have a great Rumble combo. Problem is, put a Black Shield on either the Jace or the, or the Rumble or the Maokai, and they're going to stop the Galliold instantly. Absolutely. I mean, they, they're picking it yeah. into a Black Shield, right? So if there's a priority target they want to ultimate, they can't necessarily do that. And they're bringing a big AoE circle ultimate with Janna. It's like you're picking... That synergy isn't actually not that great. And yes, you can do and it together, against the Maokai, who puts his ulti up and says, oh, you want to do magic damage? Hello, I'm going to reduce a lot of it. Very tough stuff to do. Before we hit the champs, hit the rift. Tell us who you think will come out on top. Tweet LOL Esports. Use the hashtag SSWWIN or SSBWIN. We'll be tallying up your votes shortly as we hop right into game two. A lot of hopping going to be done in this game. We got a Rengar. We got a Kha'Zix. <laughs> who's going to splat the bug or who's well, going to be taking down the cat? We got a trinket that Looper forgot to buy, so he had to oh. jump back real quickly and grab it. He's probably he's also a little bit shocked. Of the he's completely he's Galio. He goes, "What? What's? What, what is, is this? What is life? I, what is life? I am still really shocked by this Galio pick. Yes, it's something they've been practicing, but is this just just a hint of absurd desperation, or is this an ace in the hole for Samsung Blue? Varus didn't necessarily work. This is a whole other beast. Yeah, and. So Galio can start a fight if he has Flash ready. Mm -hmm. The problem is, if the Flash is gone, how is Samsung Blue ever going to start a fight against a Jace and a Corky who's just going to completely destroy you in the mid-game with Whoa. Poke? They we will have a little one really fight, quick. though. White thinks getting in and making an impact is how it happens. They're able to get out of this one. The heal! That's the dot egg. Hit the rise going early. That's going to be quick to a tier for him in the lane. And this is going to be a great start for Blue. So that was a very uncharacteristic move by Samsung White invading there, blind without much ward setup. But it's honestly something they've been doing more and more of throughout Worlds. When right. we were watching yeah, all yeah, the replays, yeah. we are thinking, this is very unlike White. They're making these, these strange risks. And we thought maybe they'd end up doing that against Blue because they were trying to catch them a little off guard. I don't think they needed to, 
but it's a style they've been adapting, and it costs them there. They have a one tier, and you only have to use one flash and a ghost yep. to actually get it here on the side of, of Sentinel Blue. If we're looking at defensive summoners they might need in the lane. Oh, man. They can be very, very happy now with this start. I mean, they're already. That is insane for Dada in mid lane. They're yeah. already a mid game team. I'm still not sure how Galio fits into this mid game. We're going to have to wait and see what <laughs> they can the do. The other four make a whole lot of sense, and they're doing great so far here. With that gust, he definitely can make it around the map quite fast. We'll see if the teleport and the roams come in from him. He'll be helping Spirit a bit in the jungle as we see both junglers milling about with each other right now, or with their top laners, I should say. Coming into this one, two exhausts on the side of white, which may help if blue gets overpowered because they're not bringing any exhaust to the table. They're ready to go all in and keep that fight. That will be dangerous if Dandy gets going. Yeah. But I do need to talk a little bit more about Galio. Yeah. <laughs> because it's been a while since we've gotten to talk about Galio. One thing that he will bring into the lane swap situation is a huge amount of range wave clear. Since they're going to be lacking it a little bit with Rise, Galio is really, really hard to siege and die. Obviously, because they're low on sustain, if they get hit by the siege, they hurt. But as far as actually diving, he is one of the best anti-dive tools ever. I remember before even the Season 1 World Championship, WCG 2010, Man, yo Galio, yo <laughs> Galio brought a summoner spell that no longer exists in Fortify, and they could not end the game. You could not finish or siege against the Galio. Maybe that has something to do with Blue's late game here, bringing that type of siege from the top lane. A which shock is very blast here would hurt so badly. There it is, actually hits Acorn as well. Are they going to yeah, be able to get in? Dottie's big. It's real danger. Dottie is big. That's a kill. That was what? Yes. not good. The quick hit bad. over. This is goes down. Dragon goes to Pawn. Pawn gets another one. What in the world is happening right now? They can turn it around. Clean it up. Dandy, they need to get out. One more hit to Hart. Hart's going to be up for a little bit. There's the twisted advance. Arcane smash. And it's going to come through for the kill. They will pick up. No. Looper. It's the auto attack coming in from Dottie as he wastes the flash in mid lane. And we have carnage to start off game two. As bad as that was for Blue, losing the dragon to Jace, which was a total disaster. What happened afterwards is still one more good time. They have double double buffs after all that ends up happening. Really poor dragon aggro swapping. Spirit didn't want to get low because he knew he had to smite, and no one else was in there to take the dragon for him. They also didn't want to group for shock blast. Pawn with some really aggressive play, fantastic job picking up the double kills. But then the fight afterwards from White was a little bit ill advised. Take what is given to you and don't try a little bit too hard. Def gets the double buffs, Dada gets the double buffs. They both have them. They got three kills on the rise despite the dragon going down and they still have an early game edge. What amazing play to start this one off. Blue definitely wanted to get their hands dirty right off the bat and they found it. White trying to come in. We have a 400 gold lead. That's about it as the lanes match up. Supports helping out the top laners as it usually is in one of these little bit of swaps and early game dragons. Clears the ward for Dandy. He gets that dragon death brush out. And it looks like they're trying to set up a little bit of their own killer play here. And because Samson White had all the members on the bottom side here fighting the dragon, and Akon went down so early, yeah. well, once he came back to life, top lane was being pushed in actually by Imp. So you could tell about up there. Notice how much farm he's already picked up just by getting there in the one on one lane. Even has Heart now to help him. If you want to go and contest the dragon yeah. in the lane swap, you have to freeze the top lane. You cannot fast push it in because then it opens up for the enemy top laner to go up there and just pick up all the farm and get extremely far ahead. So Imp should have been freezing the lane if they want to fight for dragon. Yeah, and let me tell you, Acorn's farm's not going to slow down here. Galio is really, really good at farming. When he used, We used to see him a little bit in the mid lane as well. Yeah. 300 CS was usually hit pretty early on in the game. And as a top laner here who has been Hot and cold, as far as his ability to pick up farm, as far as Acorn is concerned, is going to be hot this game on Galio. Dade, already with that catalyst, it's going to be almost impossible to push him out of lane with the regen he's going to be getting. With all that action, we do see good wards placed in by White. Two deep pink wards, at least one deep pink ward, and a regular sight ward here to try and stop anything else Spirit can bring to the table. Right now, he's down 10 CS. Dandy's trying to stay in the jungle, get himself going so he can start to impact the lanes. And this is going to be such a scary mid game now for Samsung Blue because Ryze is going to get a very early rod of ages. Yeah. He even had the tier from level 1. Stack it really early, it's going to be stacked faster than we normally see. You have the Lucian and the Galio as well to set up the fights here. The mid game of Samsung Blue is going to be extremely scary if they can start the fight. Exactly which is what not they going wanted. to be the problem. They have to get in with the Galio to start the fight itself. Right. 
And speaking of starting fights, something that Dandy has done in almost all of his games when he gets a kill early is he'll rush boots of mobility. However, this game he's 0-2-1 and still rush those boots of mobility. So I feel like he's trying a little bit extra hard to go around the map and create pressure. And if that fails, he's going to be falling really far behind. Yeah, and it's what we see on Ringer for pretty much every single player. Now you get early Moby boots, you get your level 6, and now you can start setting up the ganks here where people can react in time because, again, you have the mobility boots. We will just go in and uh, clear the Wraith can be because he has already actually a deep pink ward. Mm, is that going to get spotted by Kha'Zix? Spawning Spirit, he did. Hang on, he got, he got it. Really good. Usually that ward or sometimes that ward can last almost the entire game and i've seen it shut down so many junglers until 15 20 minutes into the game spirit checking that brush was really clutch if you're a jungler out there and you're in your own jungle just because it's a second or two always check that brush because if pink ward's there it ruins your ganks it's always good good rule of thumb yeah. always consider your scene right if you are look around any player when you walk in the bush, <laughs> look at your character because there's a pink ward. We see it too many times, even in professional games, where people just keep walking around it. Not this time for Spirit. We'll see if he can keep things going. Pretty close to level Oops, six Mata himself. Knows, man. Check the bush. Yeah, well, check out this Galio, though. Yeah, I didn't do much. <laughs> a lot of focus on the bottom yeah. lane from Blue. That's well, the that's ultimate on Dandy. He's going to jump in. He does oh, not know. Chalio is there, but there's also no ultimate to come in from him. Spot on moves coming in from White here to start to shut down a bit of that lead. They get a 600 gold lead out of that one. Hart's going to be a little lackluster on getting back out here, and we'll see what kind of pressure White can put down. And there was a ward by Samsung Blue in the bush here to try and spot Yo. Dandy, but because of the mobility boost, because he can pop the ulti so early and still catch up, he could just go in there, surprise Samsung Blue, get a very, very neat kill. Especially Imp here, he needs to catch up because there's already a BF Sword on death because of the kill and the assist he got before. Depending on what Dade can do, 3-0-1 here. Maybe go back and buy some more damage or get that charged up on the tier a little bit more. Dragon in 40. That's going to be a big impact. But Pawn still can provide poke for this. It's something that crushed down Blue last game, and he still has that chase. And so much of this will be on Dade if he can somehow close the gap towards Pawn. If he can't get into engagement range of Jace, it's just going to be a horrible time for the Samsung Blue team. No sustain with the Janna right here. And honestly, this Dragon in 20 seconds, there has yet to be a gank to preempt it. And Acorn and Looper are both in the top lane without a teleport. I really wonder if we're going to be able to see some type of early pressure. No Rengar ultimate. Spirit evolved his W. The next Dragon will also probably decide a lot of this game. So look here what Dada decided to do. Because the next Dragon is coming up, he didn't go back to finish his Rod of Ages. Instead, instant Magic Pen boots for the immediate power. He needed the power right now for this potential Dragon fight. Samsung Blue, Samsung Blue wants to win it, get the goal lead here, and that's why he gets the boot so early, and not a Rod of Ages like we normally see on Rise Pass because they want to get it stacking as fast as possible. What you saw in the old days of war, shutting down the general is what won you the fight, and this time they have not shut down the general. They're going to go ahead and set up around this dragon, and it looks like they're going to bait this one in as well. Pawn's going to clear out mid lane, and he'll be there. All right, so Blue has vastly superior vision control. Three pink wards in the river. If they have any type of catch potential, there's no flash on Galio. Dade does have both of his summoners. Dade would almost need to start this fight. It is so dangerous grouping around Dragon against the Jace poke. White is actually the team that has the potential to start the fight, but they don't have the vision to start the fight. It's a really strange situation we have here. Blue starts it to dare White to come in. Slow play. They're kind of feeding into this one. They're just one. trying to poke him down. Looking for a dark binding that'll lock down the right target from both sides. The pincer comes in. It will not be stolen. That goes to Spirit, but it might be his life for the dragon. We see Mata going down first. Then Dandy falls. It's going to be Acorn, but they have damage right now. No! It is going to be Dottie going down. White is going to start stomping through this fight. Oh, what nice. a catch! What a blast! What a finish coming in! Spirit makes it out alive after the smite, but he's just about the only one. So Samson White here decides to split up actually. We had Corky down on the bottom oh, side. Oh, it's not over. Andrew Pinter. Spirit, you're dead, my friend. Uh-oh. Gets a kill, though. No, uh -oh. yes, he got. All right. Minions OP. That fight was just blue succumbing to the poke of Samsung White. The Corky Jace just getting enough damage down there. Blue bailed out a little preemptively and just was that close to being able to close out the fight, but they took too much poke. See it again. Yeah, so notice how Corky's down the bottom side here, landing the poke. Danny wants to engage as well. 
And what Samsung Blues do now is one of the most risky things you can do. Your jungler 100% focused on Dragon to try and get it, which means he's actually out of the fight. He doesn't do anything in the fight, and it's 4v5 in that case. And now Samsung White, because they landed the poke, managed to just clean it up from now. And notice this catch here. Looper flashing on, and then Shock Blast. What Beautiful. synergy right there. Deft just couldn't escape. They're still getting some really nice farm onto Rise and Lucian, which could be a nice mid-game power spike, but oh my god, Pong. It's not like Samson White. Yeah, exactly. And Samson White's mid-game power spike with the poke they do have is just as good. If not even yeah. better, because they have so much poke on Jace and Corky, and because the Galio is going to have such a hard time engaging. You mentioned the wave clear earlier. The problem is, the Galio might be stuck in the side lane because he's the guy with teleport, and he won't be there to wave clear the yeah. mid lane. And a huge factor coming into these fights. They go long. Those two exhausts are on the exact same timer from Pawn and Mata, shutting down the damage that Dade did bring to the table. So they got to be careful, and they got to hit the shots right to start from the side of blue. Now trying to give the bottom turret a little breathing room. That's the calling out of death. We'll see how they reset this. They have good wards to stay safe here, but there's more wards from white to make more plays. Yeah, this game has actually been a really big improvement by Blue, by and large. They got the early right. game kills. They only had three kills in that entirety of the last game. And honestly, as far as their matchup against White, even though both teams have some mid-game power spikes, the fact that they're 13 minutes in, approaching 20, while not getting blown out, is really good for them. White has not been stretched in games that at all in Worlds, honestly. If yeah. it gets to 35 minutes and it's a really close game, we don't know how White's going to react. We've only seen games where White has a medium lead going right. into late game, and they look a little bit shaky just because they're so used to steamrolling teams. It's hard to pull back on the gas pedal a little bit when you're so used to going all out and always having it work. So Blue is actually in a pretty good place right now. And a lot of it, in terms of like Samson White and their late game shot calling, when they were called Ozone and they had Dade on the team, they were actually really good in terms of the late game as well with the shot calling they had. But now Dade is on blue and suddenly they're the ones who plays the late game really well. Did he steal it? No. I don't oh, Dade got it here. Dade is both playing as a complete guard in the mid lane and he's also doing most of the shot calling yeah, for his team, which right. is just insane that he's able to do it. So much focus required for that position, as like you said, also two shot call. It helps when you're four, one, and one. The Rod of Ages yet to be finished here. That's a trap. That's a big hit for him. Oh, he couldn't take the, wait a minute. Okay, I was gonna say, where are you going? You need to help your AD carry, but it's Looper was teleporting down to make even bigger plays. Bulwark onto Spirit. Keep him healthy a little bit, or at least keep Acorn healthy. Dante trying to make a play here, walking straight through wards, almost hatching these ones as he goes over it. Will it be the attack? He's gonna get locked out. Oh, what blast! Pawn is by on as he's threading Never these mind. needles. And it's only gonna be harder as they're getting the focus kills they need on the blue. Dandy and Pawn are so good together, knowing exactly the range with which Jace can follow up. And Spear runs into a big cat. It's gonna be oh. I feel like if he hit that or heard that hit, he might be going a little hard, but his flash was down, so he stays safe. Minute and 30 on to Dragon. This is what happened with White before. They started getting into Blue's jungle, and they were not able to come back from the side of Blue. Seeing that pink ward, looks like Pawn's gonna get his hands on it, take it down as well. It's hard for Blue to even defend the wards they're throwing down. Just such a nice setup as well by Samson White, knowing that Dade had roamed down to the bottom lane. That's why they didn't chase the kills and also knowing he's gonna return to the mid lane, and then he was just sitting ready, popped the ulti, got onto him, shock blast as well, and then he could just finish the job here. So just a very nice setup as a team all around, not even over chasing in the bottom lane. And White is farming up some incredibly large players here. Looper is going to be a huge problem on Maokai, specifically come the next dragon fight. It doesn't look like Blue has enough damage to deal with Looper at all. They've lost the top turret. They need to get Vision Control around Dragon again. Somehow Blue would have to control Dragon with wards and avoid the poke if they want to avoid falling farther and farther behind. But it's going to be so difficult knowing that Dandy can strike from anywhere and knowing that the pawn poke is so great. And Blue buff right now helping to charge up that man. Oh, that. one more jump from him. Spirit in a bad spot right now, but they see Death coming in. Calling comes out. The exhaust. On Spirit, coming back into the fight, keeps him out, keeps the rest of the team kind of wondering. Chaos out of the lanes, White has more time to run well, free. Once again, Dandy looking for Dade. Oh, that's still damage that Dade has, Dandy. 
Not really sure what was going to happen there, oh. but he definitely took about 75% of his HP. Dade there is a total lifesaver as far as Dragon is concerned. Getting Dandy that low will just absorb a lot of the pressure that the rest of the team was giving there. Cool little setup though. Dandy running in, he throws his E at the Wolf Camp to get the five stacks for the next one to be the yes. snare. And there's even two Pink Wards too. So he didn't know where Dade exactly was, he just knew he was nearby. And ended up actually face checking him, man. Taking a lot of damage, falls back Yikes. to base. He will have ulti for next fight. Give Dandy Definitely. Rengar and he will find a way into your jungle without you knowing, especially when White has the lead and they can start putting these wards down. Already see a bit of a movement down towards the bottom side. A nice binding, Soul Shackles. That was a nice hit. Monsoon's not gonna do enough. That'll be a last few shots. Can he hit it? Can do that? It's gonna be a bit, oh, he doesn't even want to try. Wants to solidify it with Flash. Kill secured. Because Samson White know they can now go Dragon, five members. Imp didn't want to try and hit the rockets here. Just use the Flash, get your kill. Still have Valkyrie. Exactly, and go straight onto this Dragon here. For Samson Blue, that's five members. Acorn is not even level 11. The control from White is just wow. too great right now. They are starting to do the same thing to Blue that they did in game one. They are catching them in so many positions. They are controlling the vision of the map, and they're just winning a lot of the skirmishes because they start the fights and they end the fights properly. Winning a lot, now two and three on those dragons, and that one was pretty uncontested as they went into it, which is not spelling good things for blue. They definitely have to wait this one out. Mid-game power spikes may not be used the way oh, they want them, and that many. hit two members. That's like, that's maxing over uh, just about a thousand damage you just hit across two members. Pawn yeah. did the most damage last game. He's about to do it again. Yep. Oh! Spirit. Your jungle is not your jungle, says Samsung White. They're gonna try to take it oh. back here. They said, you gotta pay rent if you're gonna stay. Idol of Duran goes down. They are not able to get too much off of that, but they do get a kill over to Dade. Still oh. the fight continues. Pawn comes in with the jump. That just looks like he is gonna chew everything up. One more hit, the double kill for Pawn as he gets a kill on Dade and Acorn, and he just gets bigger and bigger. Seven, two, and four. And this has been the story of the series here for Samsung Blue. They are a little bit out of sync. They find the fights a little bit late, and then White is punishing them again and again. This time, Dandy's Rengar does not have mercy at this point. He will continue to invade Spirit. He shuts them down. Acorn ulted the air, which really hurt them for the follow-up fight, yeah. and Pawn punished. <laughs> kind of useless after all has been used already for him. And this Jace pick, they cannot afford to give Samson White Jace again. He's too good in these early mid games fights we see. The poke he can do as well, the setup you can do with the Rengar where you snare a target and land a shock blast. Every single time we have a fight, and Jace is part of it, it just goes so heavily in favor of Samson White. This obviously is the spirit going down very early yes. because Samson White is controlling the jungle, knowing they want to come in and contest it. It's a dead target. That is a dead yeah. target. Acorn needed to save his ultimate for later on in this fight. Obviously, look upon him. That is 2020. He gets so much poke down that even when he jumped in, if Acorn had his ultimate, he would have just been taunting himself into his own doom. It's been a very ineffective Galio pick in so many ways. Yeah. But I mean, we saw that into the Jace and into the Black Shield. Yeah. It's really hard for Acorn to pull off positive plays. Almost feels like feels like Samson Blue is trying to force new picks to surprise Samson White in the way like Avaro's last. Game we saw it here where they wanted him to play Twitch to ban Tristana and then get the virus they send Yasuo to try and like just like immobile AD carry, land the ultis, kill him instantly. But there was a Janna which destroyed everything. And now you have a Galio pick against the Jace mid lane who's just gonna destroy you. Speaking of that Janna as well, during that replay, Heart actually went down. So now 0, 6, and 8, they're just feeding themselves that much more on the side of uh -oh. Samsung White. Acorn thinks he's safe to 1v1, but Dandies always everywhere. Nobody is safe on Samsung Blue right now at any point. When we do a replay, a player dies. When they go to check a war, <laughs> a player dies. It's 18 <laughs> kills in 20 minutes. It's almost the same pace yeah, that White absolutely. had in game one. They are completely picking apart Blue in every facet of the game. This is the fastest I've probably ever seen a team play. The way Samsung White is moving around the map, no the way they're finding catches. It is absolutely almost too fast to follow with everything they're doing. It'll be a soul shackles for Mata. He's getting in the right spot. Looper knows he can just put himself out in the front as a tank. Right now, that he is. The black shield goes down. They lock down Spirit, so he can't even get close with a smite. Another Baron in two games. This one for White again, and it looks like Deft is just doing what he can in the bottom lane, trying to soak up the resources as usual and be big for the late game. Yeah, so we're back in the same situation. Samson Blue just needs to try and get 
whatever goal they can on the map. I mean, being it give up a Baron just to get a tower in the bottom lane, mm -hmm. you pretty much have to take the trade because yeah. you are just falling so far behind. There's, again, so many engage options for Samson Whitey just to force the fights. Rengar and Jace needs to be taken away from Samson White next game. Yeah. But Samson Blue is banning the other star every single game. Uh -huh. We have no more bans left. Right. And the Zillion. And yeah. you probably Zillion. don't want to give him Twitch. And they've been banning Trist. There was just a little bit too much on Samsung Blue's plate right here. And it was a red flag coming into this pick and ban versatility. But beside that, it's not like Samsung White is just picking these ridiculously strong team compositions and completely outclassing them. They're also just playing way better. For sure. 100%. Every single skirmish we see goes in favor of Samsung White. If we ignore the early game part with their first buff for Dale and the Dragon, which even actually went over to Samsung White itself. Ever since that, every single skirmish, two games in a row now, heavily in favor of Samsung White. Well, we can see Blue trying to set up just a little bit and get something in their favor, but poked out every time. They don't even have enough sweepers to clear all of these yeah. wards right now. It's a zero sustained team outside of a Janna ultimate right. into mid game. Oh play. gosh. There is no way they can stand there and no. take hits. This is the perfect moment for Samson White to group when you have Trinity Force completed on your ADK, on your Corky, you have the Magic Pen as well, and your tier is fully stacked on Jace. You can just add in a BF Sword and a Last Whisper as well, and you can just start completely destroying people from max range. And there's no way they can ever get onto you. There's no flash yet for Akon. He needs a few more seconds before it's ready. And he will even need to have to flank around them. And Samsung White is just going to place walls on the side to see him coming. The thing that is so great about Samsung White is their ability to close games to completely crush opponents once they have a small advantage. They don't let teams get yeah. to the late game. They don't let any of their weaknesses show. They are compensating for them so well. Blue picked what they thought was a superior mid-game team with a little bit of a late-game edge. White is not giving them a chance to even reach those power points, and it's arguable who would even have the better late-game team once it gets there. Another uncontested dra dragon, as it should be. You don't only really want to fight a barred up Samsung White, 10,000 gold in the lead right now. They're just trying to clear what they can. Righteous Gust by Acorn so he can get back to some lanes, get some farm in. You see the pings on the pink wards. They say we need to start shutting down that vision, but it's just gonna move farther and farther into your base. They're getting the waves pushed up. We saw Dandy pushing the bottom wave as well, so that's gonna be trouble in a little bit here for Samsung Blue. A lot to consider for them. So much on their plate. It's really a question how well can they multitask coming up here because they're gonna have so much to work with, work for. Yeah, and they've been using Death now just to go between the lanes and try and get towers for some global gold, which isn't too bad. I mean, the Baron right. itself was going to be pretty much impossible for Blue to fight over because they were wow. so far behind. Also, why we see their static shift and attack speed on the boots for Death, simply just to take down towers and push waves as fast as possible, where we often see Infinity Edge into Ghostblade instead if you want to fight. That Muramana already finished up for Pawn. He's had it for quite a while. We do see finally coming out for Dade. That tier was about 50 stacks lower when Pawn hit his Muramana. He's had it for quite a while, and the blue buff has always been circling him. He is ready to keep these fights going. The wards they have allow them to do all their damage from the fog and just have Dandy come in to tear people apart with the rest of the team. And I think there's no reason for them to deviate from that plan for these next sieges. They still have an exposed middle turret in the middle lane, yeah. not even talking about the base yet, they can just poke and prod and destroy these turrets. They even have some flank poke coming in. Wave clear is easy. At this point, Blue is very low on options. I wouldn't be too surprised if they tried a desperation fight to come back. One of the problems without having that worth having that teleport, but Acorn being here is he has to walk up to this fight. He's got to hit one of those smites on off his Q. See if he can get himself in for an ultimate. Right now, it could be locked out by a twisted advance to calling the only thing used, but that's oh, Dandy. He wants to be going in on this one. We'll not see that ward, but the turret goes down once again uncontested. We actually saw Imp attack that, taking a few turret shots to his face. So you can see how powerful they feel and how much they're pushing that power to the max here. And you just saw Dandy here being ready in case Samson Blue wanted to go for the desperate play and try and engage here, because he already popped the ulti. He was already in a good position to jump. Onto death in the back line here, onto Dade, and lock them down. But obviously, Samson Blue had to give up the tower. Didn't want to try and fight just yet. Problem is, 
Samson White is not going to give up. <laughs> this They're is going to keep poking. It is such a performance here, but they catch Pawn. Let's see what happens. That's the flash for the idle Duran. We were saying it had to happen, but it's an all in. You have to get out. Spirit with a nice jump to the back. He could have that reset to get out, but the man is quite low. Dandy's trying to get the fight on. Has Vision in the brush. Now into the base. Dade goes down. Mata's going to pick up doubles there. What? Tries to throw a turn. Oh, oh, he cuts him down wow. out of the air. Peeling his wings right off. The inhibitor turret going to go down 26 and a half minutes in. I mean, that's why Dandy's Rengar is so legendary. Even though he doesn't have a fantastic scoreline this game, he's wow. probably the least fed member of the team. He can still make a remarkable play that was close to being a bit of a turnaround fight for Blue there, because it would have been three for three if they pulled that one off. Dandy pulls off a miracle, makes it two for four. White finishes the inhibitor. Let's see that again. Yes, yeah, so Aikman. One four times. On to the Jace pick. The Black Shield for Monster is not in time yeah. to actually stop all this damage, and there's no tenacity for JC because there's cooldown reduction boots. And if standing yeah. in the front line, we have, I mean, we have seen this before from him. Potential weaknesses for Samsung White. Imp's late game positioning is somewhat suspect. That cost him in this fight. But honestly, let's check out this dandy duel. He gets his fifth point in ferocity with the bola, heals as he jumps on top of oh him, my God. and then finishes him with the Q. He had that plan when he was finishing that, and he just knew exactly what to do. Some very amazing half-second plays here. It's a game of milliseconds right now between these two teams, and huge props to Looper. Double flash in from Blue on that, and he already had Ventr Ventral Maelstrom on to mitigate so much damage that yeah. they brought yeah. to the fight. That is so big. The Maokai, 20% damage reduction against so much AoE damage here from Samsung yeah. That pick itself shoot normally signal you don't go Galio against it because he's gonna pretty much mitigate all your damage. And they have the right builds too. That lock into the Iron Solari bringing the magic resistance. The Mikhail yeah, for anybody that's them. dangerous. Yeah, two of them. So if you're spread apart, you're still getting it because we've seen these fights on either edge of the map right now, on our screen rather, and yes. they're just going all out. They are bypassing the Galio counter dive. I mean, with a catch on the pawn, Looper walked right through it because he has so much itemization to shield him from that pain, and the Baron is up, the Vision Control is not there, the Poke and Catch potential from White is, Rengar is very scary in the jungle, and Blue <laughs> is scared. You can say that again. Yeah. Just Baron remember alive. again, the Magic Resist buff you do get, it is unique, so it's only, you only get the 20 Magic Resist from the Locket here, but it's simply because if they split up the fight, they have it. Right. Fight it now. There it is again. The Barons that they usually get, and that they will get one Whoa. more time. Jumping in out of Spirit. Who does he want, though? Looks like he's going to get Spirit, because he's the one that stays close after Death uses Relentless Pursuit. The chase is on, and we were talking about these long fights. It's Blue trying to run home now. Run for the hills on this one, and White's going to get what they want. They don't have too much mid, so it's all about the bottom lane right now. They are running for their lives, but even if they manage to retreat here, there is no way they can defend oh. their turret successfully. White in total control. And man, I just I just went back on my screen just to see Danny's engage here from the Baron. Right, yeah. right. He jumps in with his ulti. He knows that Spirit is going to jump away. So what he does, instead of trying to follow him, instantly he steps into the bush just next to him. So he gets to jump himself Crazy. and follows him over. Like, you cannot give that guy Ringo. And <laughs> don't give them JC. either. You can't give him a lot of things, unfortunately. However, there's only three bands in League of Legends, and Blue would need about 15 at this point with how well they're playing. Their champion pools really do seem limitless. They, they don't. haven't been challenged the world. That's the thing we were wondering coming into this. Yeah. They were playing so many different things. What are they hiding? Still don't know. Because everything <laughs> they were they've hiding done the works. But now everything it's here. Everything they have done works. works. For them to go that far without showing the Rengar, having different things to play has been absolutely amazing. We see Worlds become this amalgamation of strategies because you can't just yeah. come in playing what you played throughout the year. Everybody plays differently. Think about it. You're Samsung White's coach. This takes some guts. Your jungler's best champion in Dandy. Let's not play it until semifinals. Yeah. Right? Walking into all these games, just having the confidence you can play with your second best jungler. Han hardly played Jace, but it is Probably his best champion here at Worlds, based on what we're seeing. Imp as well. Doesn't even break out Corky pretty much at all, and it looks great. Here's the Rengar jump. Look at this, how he just steps up into the bush because he knows Spirit is going to jump away. He doesn't want to try and follow him by just running. That is just... It looks very simple, but it's such a fast reaction, and just knowing your champion, the fact you just instantly, into the bush, jump. Yeah. He has pretty fast reactions. I mean, we saw his heal while Spirit was jumping oh. over his head getting the heal before he could deal damage. And it, it really is what Riv said earlier. Split second, even millisecond yep. decisions that White is just pulling off here. 
against Blue. And now with the 17,000 gold lead, even if they're a little bit slow on their decisions, I still think they win these fights. Once again, not needing a minion wave to just go at the turret. Forcefully throwing them off, but now they have the minion wave, so it becomes that much easier. They're really just getting the advantage with everything they do. The wave control we talked about before, very much so coming into play as they're about to get a huge one towards that bottom lane with super minions coming in. All the focus here on the top, and Spirit down to half. One shock blast. Yeah, we're gonna need an all or nothing fight here for Sam and Blue. They do have the, all the summoners ready. They have the ulties. Mm -hmm. Can Akon actually get an engage here? Black Shield comes up from Mata and time onto someone. Black either Jays or Maokai. They can stop the ulti instantly from Pegalio. Otherwise, it's mm -hmm. basically the only way they can win. Just try and blow up people with your Wombo Combo AoE. Yeah. It's just. Their support can't even be involved in any of their Wombo Combo AoEs. Right. Acorn flashes in. Jan is there for the disengage. They're, that level of their composition doesn't have absolute synergy. And Jan Whoa! catches them again on the Relentless Pursuit before he could even use it. Dandy coming out with huge plays again. They're going to run through the base one more time on this one. Just a few minutes extra from game one. 32 and a half minutes. The Nexus will fall once again. And Samsung White takes it to game three, 2-0. Oh, man. I mean, the Galio pick itself, we keep talking about it. And it just made Samsung Blue, Blue's uh, come so weak. Because... Right? The Galio pick, it didn't bring anything at all. I mean, the first four picks were great. And just look at this. This is normally the guy's spirit, who's the guy cheering up his teammates. Yep. No, they are He's completely uh, not doing well emotionally after that game. The play on. thus far from White we see has home. been absolutely legendary. Two spectacular Jace games. Really, the performance from the whole Samsung White team has been legendary in the semifinals, especially when we consider that this is their third attempt at Samsung Blue in a best of five. And they're really trying to make this one count. Blue really needs to regroup. Yeah. And I mean, I just remember we had the interview after the quarterfinals with Hart, I believe it was. And he was actually saying himself, they're kind of afraid of right now because they're just looking better and better and better. And now you start up by being absolutely destroyed in two games. That is scary here, and it becomes so much harder now to kind of regain your focus and start believing in your own ability. Because you're going to start doubting every single player and every single pick you've had so far. But Sim is saying, it's not working. We have to change. Everything needs to change I mean, suddenly. I think first off, Blue probably came into this best of five feeling like big underdogs. I mean, even Spirit, when he was in that feature, was saying last year it wasn't even in his mind that he was going to be at Worlds, right? four of the five members of Samsung White were at Worlds last year, yeah. right? So it's a much more experienced path for them. It might even mean a little bit more to them. But the big thing is, the two panic picks that Blue has tried to pull out, the Varus yeah. and the Galio, those are not really congruent with their normal strategies. And they are, in a sense, desperation yeah. picks, trying to catch them off guard. And against the best team in the world, or the best teams in the world, desperation picks so seldom work. We and talked we're little, seeing that here. We talked a little bit about how these teams have not seen each other since Blue left for Taiwan, and it seems like that was the time that White found out how to open Pandora's box and just come out huge on this. Their story right now, third time's a charm, and it looks like they might get it yeah. to work. We do have to say, however, the first two games between Team Solo Mid and Samsung White were extremely one-sided for White, and then the yeah. third game seemed like the kind of... stopped paying too much attention, at least in pick and ban phase, that a very weak combo which TSM punished and won the game. It is not over yet for Samsung Blue. Yeah. There's definitely still hope here. Yeah. Because in the past, Samsung White has been known as a team who can be a bit overconfident. Well, well you can see why. <laughs> yeah. why. I mean, sure. White extremely hungry for these wins. A 27 minute game or 28 and then a 32. Right now, we're going to check in with our guys on the analyst desk for their thoughts on Samsung White's 2-0 start to the series. Thank you very much, gentlemen. I'm going to kick this one off by saying I think it is incredible. Samsung White have shown up. I want to talk about Deficio's point about Samsung White's mindset and some of the gloating that they've done in the past, but let's get through this game first. Pick some bands. Let's pull up this team comps. Double lift. You were excited, surprised, interested by the Galio I, pick. I actually really liked the Galio pick, in my opinion. It's really good versus uh, Jace and Quirky. They're both very pokey champions, and Galio does really well against Poke with Bulwark. All they needed to do was not fight before they got their double rods, and that's exactly what they did. Well, 
Uh, so are you going to go first? Uh, so coming in here uh, with the Galio pick as well to go on that, I do agree that it's potentially a strong pick. You do have some decent poke in the mid game with Lucian. But the real problem here is you're dealing with a poke comp with Corky and Jace, and there's no form of engage on this team. So if you start to fall behind, they, you, you just get poked out. Galio will never ult, and that was the problem. Yeah, honestly, I'm actually of the complete opposite opinion of you guys. I think... Uh, Galio sucks against poke comps because Bulwark works best when you heal multiple sources of damage. It's not like a shield. It is a heal per hit. And if you're only getting a hit once, that heals pretty crappy. He would have been great last game facing a Yasuo, facing an Akali, facing these things that want to jump onto your face. Like those are the kinds of champions that you want to suck in. When no one's in range of your pull, no one even cares. And even still, what I liked, and I talked about this in the last game, how Blue did not react well to Akali and they didn't have pink wards, they weren't ready for the teleport. Samsung White was ready for Galio. They actually played the fights around Galio incredibly well, and that was what was actually even more impressive to me, was their kind of counterplay. Yeah, if you're gonna have that Galio pick, the idea has to be to get that Rise AoE off and start getting the Kha'Zix resets rolling, but I yeah. totally agree with you. Without a form of primary engage, it just doesn't work here. Right. Let's talk a little bit more about some of the in-game decisions. The picks and bans, Samsung White definitely showing they seem to have an advantage. They feel like they have significantly more threats all the way down the line. Let's pull up the first replay. It's like three, four minutes in. Massive dragon fight. And Monte Cristo, talk me through the decision you're making here from actually both squads, because it felt a bit odd. Well, I mean, standard lane swap, so the team on the bottom side, let's get this rolling, is going to go ahead and take that. We will see Pawn shoot that Shock Blast, has that Trinket War coming up. And Lucian, as Crep was pointing out right now, is still in lane, so that's a little bit problematic. He needs to come up there. Uh, and the dragon just straight up kills Acorn, and the residual damage from the earlier Q from Jace is going to pick him up that kill. Now that's just a good exhaust and a good engage coming in with the Q and then actually just getting the last hit. Spirit miscalculating a little bit right there. Now Def's going to come in and Peter, you want something? Uh, yeah, Def totally just healed the wrong person. He actually could have totally saved Spirit right there, but he healed Heart instead. Yeah, and from this point on, it just clean up. Now they end up with double bust. And this is coming off a point in the game where Dade had a level one tier. And what's so interesting about this matchup in the mid lane is in a tier versus tier matchup, whoever gets that tier first and gets that earlier power spike is going to have a big edge. But Dade was really unable to convert that advantage and all of the kills he got, all those early items, into a meaningful carry this game. And again, a lot of that was because he could never really get anywhere close to Samsung White to deal damage. And I think this is why Blue will have a really hard time coming back mentally from this game because finally they got that early snowball, they almost got it running, and they made a couple mistakes on a crucial dragon fight they took way too early, in my opinion, executed it poorly. The dragon juggling was not there. The bad synergy. Spirit missed his smite, cost his team a dragon. That's a 2,000 gold swing almost, like, because 1,000 for each team in each direction. Yep. So that, that will add up really big. And that's why you saw him after the game. He was just mentally just broken. And I wonder, like, they will need more than just bouncing back from this to even come close to beating White. I wonder what's going to happen in the next game. Yeah, I think they're going to need to turn around a lot. And you talked about the game getting kind of thrown away in dragon fights. I think, in fact, that's our second replay here. It's a later game dragon fight. And this points out, one, Samsung White's really smart gameplay. And two, the Galia pick was actually fairly salvageable here. It was just a couple of misplays that actually kind of set them off. So first of all, before we start, notice that both Rangar and Corgi from Samsung White are flanking around the bottom side of Dragon. They are never grouping up as five into a choke point against Galia because that is how you die to Galia. Instead, they're going to flank. So let's roll the clip out and watch what happens because Samsung Blue identifies this and they will actually pull into the choke point together. They all come up together. Yes, okay, they have to leave Spirit alone, but he hits the smite this time around, and he's actually able to kite back into Acorn. He actually survives this entire encounter. Uh, good moves by Dada, he actually pushes away Dandy. And at this point right here, a good Galliwalt sucks the team in, and this fight starts out. Dragon and a two for one in Samsung Blue's favor. Here's the misplay, Dada says, come in, let's fight Imp. Deft comes in, Dade chooses to fight. This makes Dada get caught. Deft gets caught as well. Spirit is still there trying to save someone else, so he gets caught as well. That team could have cut and run on a two for one, maybe sacrificed one more champion, but won the fight anyway, because Galio is a good protector. But I do think when you're playing a Ghost Flash Rise and you have the Galio speed up and you recognize that you're getting pincered from both sides, the reaction to a, a common pincer is just ex attack one of the flanks, right? They're flanking you. If you move away from the right side flank and you go into targets on the left, you have double move, uh, move speed boost and double like, CCs to keep people in place. If Blue recognized that, I think they could have won that fight even harder. Even still though, Dade did solo kill the Rangar and get away. So like, for what it's worth, he still made that individual play work. 
But the thing is, is he used his ult too early right there, and yeah, he killed the he killed the Rengar, but he used his ult, and then he didn't have the ult when they grouped in the choke. And for yeah. me, if he had had that AOE there, maybe that fight would have gone differently. So I think that was a bit of a mistiming on the Rise ult. The fact that the, that team is even willing to make such aggressive plays when they have a double snowballing, they, they're running double Rod of Ages comp, and both their AD carry and mid had just recently gotten double buffs from the last dragon. So I feel like they just needed to, I don't know, wait for their comp to outscale like they should, and I don't know, it's just really strange for them to force that fight right Let there. me ask a question quickly, because we could talk about this game very long, but it's 2-0 in favor of Samsung White. Samsung Blue, picks and bans have shown weaknesses. Gameplay decisions, maybe individually, have shown weaknesses. Monty, you know these guys better than most. What does Samsung Blue need to change coming into game three to put up a better fight and possibly pick up a win? I mean, it's hard to say because I feel like their pick and ban phase hasn't been very well thought through over the course of this series. They had a lot of options, but opted to kind of go with that last pick, Galio, even though they had that little bit of a flex pick and rise. Of course, we've talked about how yeah. Acorn isn't the biggest rise player, but it's still an option. Um, and I mean, I hope they've got something going on here because otherwise that pick and ban phase is really skewed very heavily towards white. and. They have to have another card up their sleeve, I think. I would almost argue that the pick and ban phase is the least rev uh, relevant, because I feel like White's just individually outplaying Blue in a lot of these like small skirmishes, just in terms of like timings of moves, smaller plays. We saw Danny there. And then just in, in terms of strategy, I think White is just yeah. showing up but way more. That's the thing, is they're picking, the in game one, we saw that stealth skirmish comp. They're, they're intentionally choosing champions to abuse the fact yeah. that they are better at the skirmish. So I think it one kind of plays into the other. Well, player for player, Looper's outplaying Acorn, Dandy's outplaying Spirit, Pawn's crushing Dada almost every game, and Mod is definitely outplaying Heart. So really, the only thing they can do is kind of try to pick on Imp, which didn't even work in the first game. Well, we do need to move this one along. Difficult position for Samsung Blue to be in. We'll see what they do in game number three. At the start of the show, we asked you guys which player matchup will be the deciding factor in this series and why. And here's what you guys at home have been saying. From at Pakanen, he says, Imp versus Def, they have very contrasting personalities, and that clash is evident in their rivalry. It's definitely Imp that had the upper hand so far. Next one, at Shiv Raj, he sent in, nothing can touch the story of the mid laners. Pawn and Dade, when comparing the role matchups, they're the most even. Not today, they're not. Uh, next up from at Kwama Lol tweets, gotta agree with Freak on this one. Dandy versus Spirit will decide the series. The early pressure is the key to winning, and Dandy on Rengar has been a monster. Guys, yeah. thank you for the responses. We can never have too many. Keep sharing them with us at LOL Esports with that hashtag Worlds. We're gonna be coming back to game three in a second, but before that, Samsung White are just one wreck that makes us away from advancing to the finals, and when we come back, we'll see if they can close it out in game three. Guys, we'll be right back. Double there, what? tries to throw a tournament. Oh, oh no! Here comes him down. Oh, no. the 